Hello. Today we're going to do a, a flight in the Cessna 152 in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And this is going to be another example of flying using radio navigation. In today's flight we're going to fly from San Rafael on the north side of the San Francisco Bay up to Charles M. Schultz airstrip up in Sonoma County. So, if we jump inside the aeroplane and have a look, you can see in the Cessna 152 you get very basic instruments, which is good because that means we get to use our brain rather than just looking at a screen. We get a Nav1 radio, which refers to the Nav1 um, instrument. You get a Nav2 radio, which refers to this instrument. You get an altimeter, vertical speed, a clock, a compass, an artificial horizon, an airspeed, and a turn coordinator. So first thing we're going to do is just make sure this compass is absolutely accurate because we're going to need it to be fairly accurate. So at the moment it's showing 216 degrees. So we're going to compare it against this one up here and that pretty much agrees with it. Once, if you've not noticed this before, this the compass that appears on the windscreen is usually the opposite way around. So rather than reading it to the right, you'll read it to the left. So 210 degrees, 220 degrees, 230 degrees, 240 degrees. So it's kind of the opposite of when you think about this as being 210, 220, 230, 240. Anyway, so engine is already running. We're sat on the tarmac at San Rafael. So we're going to need to get some major airspeed up to clear those trees at the end. So I'm not going to bother with the flaps. Before we even take off, Let's have a think about our route. So I'm going to look at a little nav map and we are immediately going to go and disable the connection to the flight simulator. We don't want the map to tell us where we are. So we're taking off from San Rafael and we're flying to Charles M. Schultz up in Sonoma County. Um, we are going to use this radio beacon along the way, PYE. P -Y -E. 113.70. We're also going to use the radio beacon at Sonoma County, which is 113. So we'll program Nav 1 to be 113. So this is Nav 1. So we want 113. Was it 0.00? 113.00. And we make that active and it may be not showing up because we're at ground level, so it's maybe not going to see the frequency just yet. But that's fine because we know what direction to travel. 320 degrees magnetic. We also are going to tune NAV2 into 113.70, the Papa Yankee Echo. 113.70. So 113 is already tuned in, so we just turn the decimals down to 7 and make that active. So this is already enabled. If I just get the yoke out of the way so we can see the instruments easily. So we can find out the direction from us to the beacon by turning the omni bearing selector on the radio on the um, navigation instrument. So we sh this is basically saying the, the direction from us to the beacon with a frequency of 113.7 is about 265 degrees, 266 degrees. So let's confirm that just to make sure. So if I right click with little nav map and measure distance to here, 268 degrees. So we're in the neighborhood of it being what we thought. Okay. So the trick we're going to do, which is the reason really for doing this flight, is we're not going to use the two directions because they're difficult to think about. We're going to flip this all the way around and you will notice this indicator turned over. If I zoom further into the instrument, can you see it says from? So if I go back the other way, it says to and then from. So it's angle to the beacon, angle from the beacon to you. So if we turn this round, and here it comes. So the direction 
from the beacon to us is about 65 degrees. So if I measure from the beacon, measure distance from the beacon to us, have I made some sort of horrific mistake here? 113.7. Let me remove this a second. Remove. One one three point seven from should be oh six seventy eight eighty five degrees yeah so measure distance from VOR is eighty five degrees yep yeah, it adds up so we're not actually going to draw that onto the map because we know exactly where we are at the moment. So when we take off we're going to make an immediate turn for 320 degrees magnetic and then, then we will start marking our position on the map. Just to make this a bit more fun we're going to change the weather and we're going to set the lowest level of weather that the altitude at the bottom of the weather or we'll say coverage is going to be 100% so complete fog bank and we're going to pull it down to um, 1500 feet maybe or we go less than that let's go to zero so it's a complete pea soup fog <laughs> we'll say the top of it is going to be so we don't make it too dark for ourselves is going to be sort of 5000 feet because we're not going to go anywhere near 5000 feet anyway we're going to stay at about two and a half thousand feet okay so, you, so this just stops us from cheating and seeing anything from a long way away. So we are going to take off and then turn left to 320 degrees. Does that make sense? So also turn right to 320. So here's the compass. So we need to turn to 320, which means on this map we are taking off from 22. Yeah. If we go and look outside, we can probably confirm that. Uh, how do we get the outside view in Flight Simulator? There we go. Is this, is this wrong? We got a number? Yeah, there's runway 22. So that makes sense of what we were seeing on the compass. Okay, so let's get going. It shouldn't take too long actually to fly the route. So, bearing in mind there's that hill. A racing start there held the brakes and held the brakes until the throttle came up to speed and the propeller was spinning off the brakes we're rolling holding on a little bit of right rudder to keep the plane in a straight line speed 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 and rotate and immediate right turn Keeping an eye on the speed, still, I'm just aware that there are hills around here and we're going to need to get altitude fairly quickly, which is why I didn't bother with flaps. Speed is everything when you're climbing. Flaps essentially allow you to go slow. We don't want to go slow, we want to go fast so we can climb. Obviously a Cessna is not going to break any aviation laws because it can't go faster than about 120 knots anyway. So we're climbing out and we're on our 320 degree track. So if you remember, if we just make sure this is going to be fairly stable for a moment. We have got Nav1 tuned to the beacon over here at 113. So just make sure we're not wandering off. One, our 320 degree track. So nav 1 is tuned to 113. So if we tune the omni bearing selector to, we're going to that beacon. Get it in the middle. And it's saying, yeah, we need to go 320 degrees and it's dead in the middle. So can you see that? 320 degrees. 
to go directly to the beacon and we're on the line because the, in, the needle is in the middle which means we are exactly on the line to approach the beacon at 320 degrees. If we wander to the left of the line, the needle will go right. If we wander to the right of the line, the needle will go left. So I'm starting to wander actually slightly to the left, looking at the compass. So let's have a look outside. We're climbing at 500 feet a minute, which is great. look outside you can see the, the hills in the mist we're clear of them so it's not a major issue okay so we keep an eye on the attitude of the aircraft it's slowly starting to roll to the left we're going to roll right so we can play games now with tuning in remember we pre-tuned nav 2 to the beacon that was across our flight path or you know adjacent to our flight path which will allow us to measure where we are along the line quite easily so if we tune this with it showing a from bearing I'm trying to do zoom in and out without hitting the omni bearing selector and I keep hitting it I'm just straightening us up again Oh, we're up to 330 degrees. So the angle from us to the beacon, oh, so from the beacon to us, is about 73 degrees. So we can go on here and we can measure VOR DME 73 degrees. So that's about where we are at the moment. So we just need to carry on flying, basically, and tracking 320 degrees. And we can use the map to figure out where we are. So we will keep measuring from the beacon as we go past. We'll eventually end up and we'll retune NAV1. Instead of being to the, the main beacon, we'll go for the ILS frequency instead and follow it all the way into the ground. So we're at 2,500 feet now, so I'm going to stop climbing. So I'm going to use a little bit of elevator trim. You'll see the vertical speed is changing. So I'm going to roll left as well slightly because if you look at the compass, we've started to drift. So let's roll it back up. You'll notice there's a gap at the top of the compass so you can easily see if you're in level flight or not. Of course, being in level flight doesn't mean we're going in the direction we're pointing. You can get an indication of that by looking at the turn coordinator and you can see the bubble. Even though we are level, the bubble is off to the right. So it means we are being pushed sideways by the wind. And you can see that happening here. Even though we were level, the compass is slowly rotating. It means the tail is being pushed right. Does that make sense? So I'm turning very gently back into it to turn us back again. So we're still climbing actually, so I'm going to come back down. I don't want to go any higher than sort of two and a half thousand really, so I'm going to come back down. So you can see the... I'm just using elevator trim to do this by the way. So we're dropping down at about a thousand feet a minute and we're quite rapidly coming back. The trouble is, by just putting the nose down, I'm going to pull the throttle back. We're getting kind of dangerously fast. 152 is not designed to go particularly fast. So again, I'm just moderating our vertical speed with elevator trim until the um, indicated airspeed stabilizes out a bit. So we've, while we were busy doing that, the wind has pushed us around. So we're going to Again, we're flying over hills, so the, hill, the wind is not going to be consistent either. It's going to fluctuate all over the place. So you can see now we have drifted to the right of the line. 
of the 320 degree line. So I'm going to come back to 310 degrees to slowly correct that. So once we've got this stable, we'll do another measurement on the nav radio. Okay. So what direction are we now from the beacon? We are about 50 degrees from the beacon. So if I put the mouse back on the beacon and measure distance from the VORDME beacon at 50 degrees, we are now about there. Yeah, so we have now charted our course. We've started turning left again. Uh, turning right, I mean. The aeroplane has started to t turn around all on its own. The 152 doesn't sit very stably if you just centre everything up. It doesn't necessarily hang on the wings like some aeroplanes do. You do have to consciously keep flying it in a straight line. <laughs> or at least the version in my in-flight simulator tends to wander. So I've put a used a tiny bit of aileron trim, but it it's still trying to roll right. So I wonder if we can still see the ground outside. Oh, just vaguely. It's down there in the mist. So we've dipped below two and a half thousand feet now, that's fine. Looking at the map, if we put on the topo map, you can see there's some hills around this area. We're already leaving the area where the hills are. So we're dead on track now for 320 degrees again. So we can get the compass, you can see here, look, for the 320 degree radial into the beacon with a frequency of 113, we're dead on the line. So there's the, the beacon with 113, there's the 320 degree radial towards it. This means we're going to it at 320 degrees, yeah. And the aeroplane has started to bank all on its own, which is great, really helpful. <laughs> so, how are we doing? We're at 2,200 feet. I'm going to give it a little bit of elevator trim to climb us back up. Just trying to adjust it just enough. You'll see, obviously, pulling the nose up is going to affect the uh, indicated airspeed. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Maybe I could just give it a bit more throttle, which would do the same trick as pulling up, to be honest. It makes us faster, gives you more lift, the nose comes up. I don't want to overdo it, though. So you can see the indicated airspeed is slowly coming up, therefore lift and vertical speed is increasing. So it's gently pulling the altitude back up again. So we're still doing 310 degrees. We've gone slightly to the left. As we get closer to the beacon, the needle will move more. Because if you imagine the closer you are, a small lateral difference is going to make a bigger effect on the needle. The further away you are, the less lateral effect there will be. You know, so, so being 50 yards either side of the, the line, isn't going to make as much difference if you're a long way away from the beacon. If you're right on top of the beacon, that's 180 degrees that you could be from it. So let's do, should we do another reading of the beacon with 113.7. So let's centre this back up. Where has it got to? I've got on the wrong side, haven't I? Whoops. Four, oh, 10, 25 degrees. Yeah. So if we have a look and measure distance from the beacon, 25 degrees. We're about there. Okay. So we just carry on. We've actually we've slid to the left of the line. So we're going to go to 330 degrees to get back on the 320 line. So I'm just turning 
and you can see the compass turning. We're still only at 2,200 feet, so we've kind of stabilised. So I'm just going to go a little bit faster, so increase the throttle, which will give more lift, and will lift us back up. So I've, I've turned back across 330 degrees, so we should see the needle come back in towards 320. When it centres up, we can turn left back to 320 degrees. What we're doing is ensuring that we're on the line. By this showing that the, the needle is to the right of the centre of the instrument, it means we are to the left, so the line is to the right. Does that make sense? So we're back on the centre of the line, so I'm going to turn left to 320 degrees. Just gently do it. Now we're getting to the point where we might be able to tune in the ILS. So I'm just going to centre this up and we'll go and have a look at what the ILS frequency is for runway 109.3, 321 degrees. So 109.3. So we'll change nav1 to 109.30. And we'll switch over active. And it's already switched on. Notice you, the Omni bearing selector doesn't actually do anything if you've got an ILS. But we can put in 321 anyway. So it's going to be about there. So it's saying that we are to the right. This instrument is saying we are to the right of the line. So we are going to fly at 300 degrees. But also, for this point in the flight, we should have really done this before we started turning. Um, we're going to get the last reading. So 10 degrees. So if we go and zoom out and measure VOR. So at the point we turned, or just, just after it, we we're about there, yeah? So now we can concentrate completely on the ILS. See now, I turned left, and we've gone to the left of the line now. So I'm going to turn back right. We know the runway is about 320 degrees. So if we turn back to 330 or 340, we can intercept again. So I'm just turning gently to 330. and the needle is coming back in, very slowly. So I've turned to 340 just to expedite it slightly. Now very soon, because we are getting close to the ILS, the entry point is usually about two and a half thousand feet, which miraculously we're at. That was planned, by the way. Um, okay, so we're coming up to the beam. So I'm going to turn back to 320. So we're back on the beam. So we're now waiting for the horizontal beam, or the horizontal needle, which indicates our vertical position. Here it comes. We're approaching the ILS beam. So we're going to centre the screen up and we're going to start to fly the ILS. So I'm cutting the engine back. Turn right slightly. We're off to the left of the, the centre line, looking at nav 1. So I'm now at 330 degrees on the compass, and the needle should be slowly coming back to us. It's interesting that the vertical needle hasn't... Oh, we're descending quite fast, that's why. So I'm going to level us up so we're not descending, so we get the vertical needle into the middle. So I'm going to put some elevator trim in. So we come down to 2,000 feet. 
turn back to 320 degrees, we've gone past the centre line. Okay, so we're continuing on. We are flying back towards the center line, watching the vertical speed, coming back to 330 degrees because we're off to the left. up and if we stay level you will see the needle come down. Oh I don't believe this. Yeah, forget it. We're having internet problems. Half the reason there was a cut in the internet just now is because of course if the internet cuts out in the house everybody arrives at the door. So I'm probably gonna have a very basic scenery when I get to the ground get ready, here comes someone else to say I can't see the internet. So you can see the ILS centering up. We're only at 1500 feet now. Twenty degrees on the heading. We're off slightly to the left, so we'll go slightly to the right. Ready? We're heading three to five degrees. We're slightly above the glide slope now, so I'm going to cut the engine. Flaps one. And now off to the right. Warning successfully connected. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks a lot, computer, for warning me that something's successful. That almost presumes that it won't be successful, doesn't it? Flaps two. And we can see the, the lights at the end of the runway now, directly in front of us. Which doesn't mean we're going to disregard the instruments. We are going to follow them now to take us down in a controlled manner through the mist to the runway. Sixty knots. It's probably a good approach speed. Should we sit up slightly in the chair? And we're above the glide slope. ILS in. And we can now see the runway. Just. It's appearing from the gloom directly in front of us. Three, so we're on full flaps now. And we're just following the ILS down methodically, correcting if we need to. Okay, a little bit slow. Total speed of a Cessna is about 40 knots, so we want to stay at least 10 knots clear of that. And suddenly here's the runway and it's nice and clear. Turn 
turn, there's a little bit of a crosswind here. It's the wrong way. Follow the ILS in, which will put us on the centre line completely automatically. Just gently follow it. And now our focus completely changes to the wrong way. So over the markers, cut the engine, and flare. And we're down. Brakes. We could immediately turn. And there's another airplane taking off, I wonder who that is. So we will immediately turn left to avoid the traffic. And I'm going to stop here on the taxiway. So there you go, that was quite a simple navigate, radio navigation flight um, using a couple of different beacons and then ILS to guide us in through the fog. So I'll edit the video later and hopefully it'll be online soon.